we have uh, this article here from Nikki Swift.com. It says celebrity careers are destroyed during 2020. I think I mentioned this in a few shows prior. That it's interesting to me the amount of people that got cancelled during COVID. It felt like, in my opinion, from my perspective, it felt like because people were bored at home, it was probably the worst time to get cancelled or to be involved in some sort of public scandal because people were bored and at home and on their phones. So it kind of heightened um my new things that probably shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things and made them a lot bigger than what they are and it obviously negatively affected the people that were at the bare brunt of it for a longer period of time than it should have because no one has anything else to do they're bored drama that kind of you know essentially distracts them from the um, horrors of everyday life is very much welcome so there's a list of people here we're going to quickly go through and see what the deal is and again i'm only fascinated with this stuff as well because i don't know there's part of me that kind of hopes wishes one day that i have a um, crisis management company right that allows to kind of you know helps these public figures to navigate the murky waters of cancellation because i'm sure there's an art to it it definitely is i've seen the good i've seen the bad i've seen the ugly but definitely is a way to kind of get around and manage the cancellation in the best way possible and some of these people have done it well some people haven't so the first one is what stacy schroeder and kirsten doubt lost it all i'm guessing this is the one from vanderpump rules yeah, it is it said here stacy schroeder and kirsten were the queen bees of vanderpump rules up until june 20 2020 when patriots reported that schroeder lost brand deals with R rachel and Billy after former castmate Faith Stowers recorded a 2018 incident where Schroeder and Kristen called the cops accusing her of a crime she didn't commit that was funny isn't it the two whitest of the whitest girls on the show decided to call the cops on the black girl one of the only ones that's been on Vanderpump Rules because something went missing classic 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 Karens um, on the Instagram live chat Stowers said that Schroeder misidentified her as an unnamed woman in Daily Mail um, Afri an African American lady who was robbing people Schroeder actually Actually bragged about in different investigation on Stowers, uh, showed her project Instagram, but it wasn't enough as well, none of as more of her past in incidents of racial insensitivity resurfaced, including describing herself as a Nazi chic again. I don't think even my agency can help you doing with that. In 2018, Instagram story, I'm complaining about black people wanting representation in film <laughs> during a 2017 podcast. After writer revealed that Schroeder and Dirk got fired from Vanderpump Rules, they both publicly apologized. However, Stowers tell people that Schroeder never reached out privately. Doubt did DM her. Um, Us Weekly said Schroeder's podcast was removed from all platforms and her wine line with Doubt was pulled from stores. Doubt and CMC didn't have much to lose as Schroeder, but her publisher did not promote her book but after just one week of sales according to deadline show then Dota began working with a crisis management team in the wake of the scandal so again maybe it was too late by that time to to kind of plug the hole but i guess there's no coming back from them in that regard i guess when it comes to racial things it just seems like there's nothing really you can do if you don't get ahead of it before it becomes a big story it just you have to do that kind of self-flagellation thing where you come out and maybe do um what is, you remember Kalila on Tiger Belly when she started sobbing about Black Lives Matter when the protests were happening? Like, I don't know what I did. Like, she just started making it all about her. You just have to do something like that. Um, you can't just come out. You can't come out and then you can't come out and acknowledge it and then not apologize properly. You have, sort of have to just, you know, cry profusely and hope that kind of makes it go away. Ellen DeGeneres, of course, you know about her. Um, I don't know who this is. Lee Michelle. You got Nene Leakes. So don't care about this one. Tory Lanez is an interesting one because of the whole Megan Thee Stallion shooting. Um, he's fine because it's a court case now, so they're going to basically go to court sometime this year, I'm assuming. They're going to find out the actual details of what happened that fateful night after they went to Kylie's, right? It all started off pretty well, wasn't it? That amazing image of him in between Kylie, uh, Jenna, and Megan Thee Stallion, every boy out there sort of looking at him thinking, wow, man, how did he do this? Him in his head thinking, yeah, look at what I'm doing. And then suddenly, a few hours later, all hell breaks loose. And still, we don't have the truth for the issue, but considering how Tory is moving, and nav navigating out there in the streets it seems like he's very confident that he did nothing wrong so let's see how that transpires so he's fine you got kelly dude i'm not sure who that is uh obviously the johnny depp and amber heard thing was a big deal and essentially told us that men getting beaten up by women nobody gives a shit um colton underwood i don't know who that is 
And then Chris D'Elia, interesting one, right? Chris D'Elia here. So Chris D'Elia found fame as a comedian and an actor in TV shows, including Whitney and You. There's a sex came crashing down in June 2020 when five women spoke to the Los Angeles Times accusing D'Elia of exposing himself and other sexual improprieties. Two of those women claimed they were under 18 when they had a counsel with D'Elia, one of whom allegedly began corresponding with him when she was 17 and he was 36 in September 2020. CNN shared accusations of two additional women who had similar experiences including traumatic unwanted advances in which D'Elia exposed himself. <laughs> I forgot about that one. I think that's the one where the lady said he pulled out his piece in the car, in it. <sighs> the year's lawyers, Andrew Brett, uh, Brettel, shared a statement with Variety declaring the Leo denies the allegations and emphatically states that he has never engaged in any sexual encounter with a woman without consent. Even so, his career will probably never be the same. Deadline reported that he was dropped by his talent agency and management company. Netflix Dish plans to for an unscripted prank show that he was pranked used to partake in he also was replacing the upcoming movie army of the dead with flipping tig Notaro. that must have been more uh debilitating and more of a punch to the gut than brendan Shaw fake crying on the fire and the kid right the fact that tig Notaro replaced him is like yikes um the delirious the, the uh bigger worries than missing opportunity to prank come randoms on netflix show but the lost jobs and lack of industry support will identity have been a lasting impact on his career good lawyers don't come cheap and I think I said it before at the end of the other live stream. The issue with Chris D'Elia more so is the fact that of his image prior, no one, I guess no one, most people didn't see him in a sexual way. I guess he had an appeal with some girls. I know a lot of girls liked him and thought he was really handsome. You know, he's a stand-up comedian. He's probably the only one that looks the way he does. Most stand-up comedians look like Tim Dillon. No offense. So if that's the case, or like Tim Dillon or like, what's the other guy? Um jim norton and all those kind of dudes so you know there was obviously uh, he did have some sort of pull with the ladies but no one thought of him as a creep right because you didn't really see that in his material you maybe saw him as a bit of a funny dude um life at the party saw a guy but you never really saw the creep side of things of him of chasing you know tail chasing the girls around town so when that story came out it sort of caught everyone by surprise because you didn't view him that way and also the fact that it involved really really young girls like whoa do you know what I mean that was the thing that kind of put him off so that's what fucked him over like you think of something like a Louis CK when that story came out about Louis CK it wasn't that surprising because his material is really dark right and he kind of lets you know and he stand up that he's into some weird shit so when that story came out you're like oh that makes sense it's Louis CK don't get me wrong still you know horrible thing for the people the comedians are involved to go through but in terms of an actual event, you can kind of imagine that happening, right? You can kind of picture it even before it's been told. But Chris Lee is sort of free for a loop. And then, of course, himself as well, he probably is dealing with a lot of struggle in terms of, I guess, not feeling, I guess it's more so shame in it, right? The fact that everyone knows your secret, because I think that's a big part of it. Even though, let's say outside of rape, let's say you're, you're kind of into some really odd things, it must be really shameful to have that exposed to the world because it's something that you keep private between yourself and whoever you're trying to pursue. And sometimes you you swing and you miss, right? And it is what it is. Or sometimes you get a bit overbearing or you get a bit excited. Cool, it happens. But for it to be displayed around the entire world and then on top of that, for you to be accused of you know sexual assault and coming onto people unwantedly, it can be a hard thing for you to kind of figure out in your own head. So um, I guess there's no legal proceedings that he can basically face apart from... I guess suing for damages and emotional distress. I'm not too sure if there's any sort of um uh thing that he can be pulled up in the courts of in that. So it's more so just him having to get the courage to step back out in front again because I think you know he's still got a pretty loyal fan base. I'm sure the podcast listeners will want to hear his story. His first show that he gets back will be you know will do some good ratings. People want to hear what he thinks about the lack of support he got from his actual friends in the industry, which would be curious to see what he thought about Chris Alia and Brian Callan crying and only for Brian Callan to be accused of rape the very next week. What he thinks about Bert Kreischer, another good friend of his who basically said he never spoke to him, um, even though they did a show together and he had to scrap the show and film it with other people and just in general the fact that people kind of distance themselves from him as soon as he kind of got accused of what he got accused of but they were also very quick to get him on his show and enjoy all the riches of his views when he was around i wonder what he'd say about something like that but again i just think someone like him he has to kind of deal with a lot of things he's had to get 
ahead of things but of all the people on this list of the ones i know he might be the only one that could have a chance of having some level of a, of having some kind of career going forward because again he's kind of a comedian he doesn't try and paint himself as a perfect civilian so there is an aspect where you can kind of say hey i have my flaws i have my things i'm going through bloody blah 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 and uh, obviously tory lanes has a, has a chance too because it's a court issue so he can basically prove his innocence there in a court of law but it's hard man isn't it 2020 was the year of getting cancelled it's very very difficult i guess it's the one of the worst times to ever get oh yeah there's all um destroyed their career it's it's one of the worst times to get cancelled because again like i said everyone's at home nothing to do staring at their phone um it's hard to kind of bounce back from it but i guess in this new year with things maybe opening up with the vaccine it could be a good way to just slip out people kind of forget because they're too busy partying and getting high and fucking everything that moves to kind of worry about you so that might be a good timing maybe wait until the summer when everything reopens and then slip back out again who knows interested to see what goes on let me know in the comments do you think chris lear can make a comeback let me know what you think in the comments down below